What's going on everybody, Connor here, and today I'm gonna to tackle one of the biggest questions in sports, especially around this time of year. That being, what is the perfect format for the college football playoff? Now, if we were just gonna do it for 2018-19 this season, we could just do a two-team playoff because we know Alabama and Clemson have been by far the best two teams. But we've had a two-team playoff for most of the history of college football, and we know that's not the solution. Right now we have a four-team playoff, but the question is, should we expand? Should it be a 6, 8, 12, 16, even 24-team playoff? Now, that's the question I'm going to answer today. The goal when we're deciding how many teams should be in the playoff, it's kind of a balancing act. We want to make sure every team that's deserving of a shot at the national championship has that shot without making it too big, without there having to be too many games, uh, for the players to play, and making sure that every team that gets in actually has a chance at winning the whole thing. So those are our goals. My answer to the question is this. The best college football playoff tournament would be an eight-team field with no auto bids. Now that's two you know, separate criteria, eight teams and no auto bids, so I'm going to break them down one at a time. First off, eight teams, the actual number of teams. It's clear to me that the four-team playoff we currently have is too small. And the primary reason for that is UCF. UCF went undefeated in 2017, then won their bowl game against Auburn, then went undefeated again in the regular season in 2018, and still did not get a spot in the four-team playoff. Now, I don't actually think that UCF was probably one of the best four teams in college football this season. They probably were correctly ranked around that 6, 7, 8, uh, you know, spot. However, if a team goes undefeated for two straight regular seasons and they still can't get a spot in the playoff, that tells me one thing. That means a group of five team basically has no shot at making the playoffs under the current format. And that is a problem. If at the beginning of the season, half the teams are already eliminated before any games are played, you know, the whole notion of any team can win is really a lie which means we need to make the playoff format bigger. Now, of course, strength of schedule uh, has been noted with UCF, but that's not always the easiest you know, s solution, just have a tougher strength of schedule. A lot of teams schedule their non-conference games several years in advance, and some teams might not want to schedule UCF because who knows if they're going to be this good in five or six years. So that's a very tough ask for UCF, just to have a better schedule. Also, I think that teams should be allowed to have one bad game. A big problem with me for college football is it feels like if a team loses any game, they're automatically out of the running. We saw this happen with Ohio State this season. They played fantastic. They had one bad game against Purdue, and all of a sudden, no chance at making the playoffs, basically. I think teams should be able to afford one bad game and still show through the rest of their uh, schedule and the rest of their season that they're worthy of a spot. So I do think we need to accommodate that and add a couple more teams in. Now, what I don't buy is the argument that instead of fighting over who's the fourth spot, we're going to be arguing over who's the eighth spot, and then the teams that finish ninth, tenth, eleventh will be arguing, oh, we should have got in, yada, yada, yada. Here's the deal with that. I think with four teams, that's a, that's a fair argument with the fifth and sixth team. Oh, maybe we should have got in. But with an eight-team field, this is going to allow every undefeated team to make it in, especially from power conferences. It's going to allow basically all the one-loss teams to make it in, and some two-loss teams in, some, in most years. You know? So I think if we're at that point, and you're a two- or three-loss team, and you're sitting at 9, 10, 11, you know, the only fault is your own for not making it into the playoff, really. Because if you have multiple losses, then you know, you're, you've, you've afforded your one bad game. You know, you've used it up, and you've lost multiple times. At that point, I just don't think you deserve a spot. So for me, I think eight teams is the perfect number. Uh, but also, let's talk about no auto bids, because I think when people talk about an eight-team playoff, the most common uh, format that people say, people talk about, is giving all five of the Power Five Conference champions a spot in the playoff, the top group of five team a spot in the playoff, and then two additional at-large bursts slash wild cards to get us to that number of eight. Now, I don't like this for a number of reasons, and I'll explain them here. First off, it assumes that the five power conferences, and this won't be a major issue for the next few years, but in the future, it assumes that we will still have these five power conferences, that they won't dissolve or change or anything, and that these five conferences that we have now, the ACC, Big Ten, Big 12, Pac-12, SEC, will always be the best five conferences, which is not always 
uh, which may not always be the case, and it definitely hampers teams like uh, teams in the American Conference, which for me is by far the best Power Five or uh, Group of Five conference. They're easily sixth, and maybe even closer to the Pac-12 than the rest of the Group of Five conferences. What this also assumes is that every year a Group of Five team will be deserving of a playoff spot, which is not necessarily true, and it also assumes that every year the winner of every co- Power 5 conference will be deserving of a spot. Now, for me, this year, the Pac-12 did not deserve a spot, even in an eight-team field. Even, you know, Washington would be their best team, but for me, they were probably nine or ten at best. You know, I would have teams like Ohio State, Georgia, UCF, and Michigan in those five through eight spots instead of Washington. So it basically guarantees, uh, if you're using this eight-team playoff with the five power conference champs, power five champ you know it basically says even if you're not the top eight team one of the top eight teams if you you know satisfy this qualification you'll get in anyway which i don't believe is the way we should do it uh lastly it also hurts independence like notre dame uh for the reason that you know they're the only two of the eight spots that they can possibly attain are the wild card spots so automatically six teams in the field will not be going to independence like notre dame i don't think three independents will ever be top eight worthy Uh, But it does, for Notre Dame, definitely hurt their chances because they have to be one of the top two at-large champions. They have to be one of the top two teams that did not win a conference, um, which makes it very much more difficult for them to make it, and I think that's pretty unfair. Uh, The crux of my argument is basically this. If we want the best teams in the college football playoff, the playoff should choose the best teams regardless of conference. That means if a team, you know, has one loss, they should... But, you know, they're a very tough team, played a very hard schedule. I think and they had maybe one bad game, one slip-up. I think they should be deserving, you know. I think undefeated teams should get in. Uh, it's actually interesting when you talk about teams like UCF. Uh, I did want to create kind of, you know, an addendum, uh, an asterisk that says if any team goes undefeated, they have to make the playoff. Uh, however, it did occur to me, actually a friend told me this, shout out to Dylan, Uh, that if that was the case, a lot of teams would really schedule pancake non-conference schedules, you know, play the easiest three teams as possible to, you know, increase their teams, especially group of five teams, uh, their chances of getting in, which I think hurts uh, college football as a whole because we want these teams to be playing higher quality opponents. Um, So I'm not sure exactly, you know, there's not really a perfect way to do this, but I do think if a team goes undefeated from any school, they should have strong consideration and in most, if not all, cases should probably get in. Uh, But that's my plan for making a perfect college football playoff. Eight teams, no auto bids. Find the best teams, no matter where they play, no matter if they're in a conference or what conference they're in. Put them in the playoffs. You know, every team that's deserving should get a chance. And if you're not in the top eight, well, then that's your own fault because you've lost multiple games Uh, and you don't deserve to be in it at that point. But I do think we need that extra, you know, kind of safety blanket, add a couple teams in. You know, obviously this year I would have loved to see Georgia have a shot at it. I would have loved to see Ohio State have a shot at it. And I think a lot of years there's going to be teams in those five through eight spots that can make a serious run. So once again, I'm Connor Grohl for Top Level Sports. That is my plan for the perfect college football playoff, and I'll see you next time.